All right, misfits. That's it. We went into the jungle this time, and we saw the predator. I think so. And guess what? That was one beautiful motherfucker. True. <laughs> this time, I missed cast movie reviews. What? Here's Johnny. I love the smell of my cup in the morning. Into the jungle. Say hello to my new friend. I'm gonna make him an offer again. This is my job. You're gonna need a bigger boat. Hey, Miscast Miscreants, welcome back to another episode of Miscast Movie Reviews with your wonderful host, JJ. Hello. And we have a guest host this time. This is Jack. We got him straight out of a package that was delivered early, early on this morning. That's not Greg? That's no. not Greg. I, no. thought, I thought maybe Greg ate too many uh, yeah, Ari- yeah. Ariana Grande's from Taco Bell, and, <laughs> and th- that's <laughs> what happened. <laughs> <laughs> no. Say hi, Jack. No, just uh, filling in for Greg today. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> are you filling Greg or filling in for him? Well, are you, how are you filling Is him? Is Greg under the table? <laughs> He's definitely not. Hopefully. <laughs> All right, guys. That's Jack, and uh, I'm William Davis Moore, and let's get into it, man. I know you guys saw The Predator because this is a spoiler review. Big time. And I know we saw The Predator because we're here talking about it with you guys. And yet another failed attempt to recreate the thrilling awesomeness that was 1987's Predator. You're one ugly motherfucker <laughs> director Shane Black takes us on a roller coaster of emotions that ends in tears so you got this little predator he's running from this big roided predator and he crashes his ride on earth after conveniently leaving his weapons out for a trained killer to find he gets owned by his own shit the government takes him to their secret base where they tie him to a table with weak ass restraints then they send our hero, the sassy sniper, to a loony bus where no one will believe he jacked up an alien and stole his shit, which he mailed to his kid. His kid activates the sweet-ass tech and alerts Roid Predator of his location. Roid Predator comes to fuck shit up and Little Predator escapes. Hot government scientist gets in trouble with the men in black so they try to kill her and she turns into a poor man's Wonder Woman and joins the sniper and his band of loony heroes. Eat her pussy. A long story short, everybody gets in a fight, blood sprays everywhere, and the good guys win. Spoilers, bitches. Alien Predator Dogs. The Predator. So, JJ, what did you think? Oh, man. Shane Black's rendition (laughs) of his first starring role. I got to say this. This is what I took out of the movie. If autistic kids don't already have enough shit to worry about, (laughs) now they got to worry about the freaking predators coming to 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 eat their brains and steal their knowledge. I mean, it's like the he's like the new boogeyman for autistic kids. Is pretty much what I got out of this movie. You know. So, um this movie was supposed to be a direct um sequel to the original uh Predator, but to me there was so many thematic differences about it that it almost didn't feel that way. There was a lot of uh there was a lot of cool nostalgic jokes that kind of called back the first movie. Uh, and the storyline is based on the uh, initial incident that happened in the first movie, but thematically, it's it's a completely different movie. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of my take on it for now. All right, for now. All right, all right. Your your inaugural uh, ninety second review, Jack. Go. So I was lo- really looking forward to watching this movie because I'm a big fan of the first Predator, and I've always felt like they haven't really done a good job with the other movies, the sequels. Uh, but this movie had a lot of elements where it felt um, a little jarring at times. Um, the Predator really looked uh, cool. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I know. I like it. I know. The Predator looked cool. <laughs> <laughs> Why don't you go so I get a better idea of what I'm doing here? So from what I get from <clears throat> your conversation is the Predator looked cool and it was a mediocre movie, right? Yeah, it was pretty average. My opinion on it was my bar was so low that it was under my skateboard. So Damn. Wow. Yeah. So I was pleasantly surprised that I enjoyed the movie. I enjoyed it just because I didn't have any expectations. Um went in thinking this movie's going to suck balls. Um, I was like, all right, Shane Black, but he did Iron Man 3. So <laughs> I was like... The worst of the Iron Man. Yeah. I was yeah. like, man, uh, you know, it was tra- Kiss Kiss Bang Bang, awesome. But Iron awesome Man movie. 3, not so awesome. Um, so when the shit started hitting the fan, you know, when when the, you know, when, uh, we can get into it, but when the, the shit started hitting the fan, I was like, all right, you know, I'm, I'm still, a little, still a little pissed off. The story sucks, but now I'm having some fun. 
So uh, yeah, I I, en- I enjoyed it, but I still have a lot to bitch about. So mm. or I wouldn't be here. I guess I'm the bitchiest motherfucker. <laughs> 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 All right. So general thoughts. Let's go. Well, one of the things that I found uh, interesting about the writing of it is that uh, there was like almost two schools of writing. One was good and one was really bad. Yeah. Uh, The dialogue in between the characters, I thought that was like really cool. I like the dynamic between all the characters. Yeah. Like one of the things that um, that you love about the first movie is the dynamic between all the characters. And uh, I thought that was well done in this movie. Uh, there was a couple soldiers that were apparently gay, you know, in a relationship, you know, they were like suffering from PTSD and, and there was a lot of humor that, that I thought was great. (laughs) This fucking guy is crazier than the rest of us. (laughs) But when it came to the exposition writing, it was awful. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Like the exposition of the story, like just getting the story across was like so bad. There's this one scene where the predator, he's, he's trying to like find out where this thing is and he scans the kid's room. And he sees that, oh, the kid's name and the school that he goes to and the grade that he's in. So he knows where to go next. Exactly. But what the hell does a predator know about, how does a predator know that, that that word is that kid's name? And how does a predator even know what an elementary school is? He's an alien from another planet. <laughs> like, he understands the whole structure of, of our society and what means what. I, I mean, I really don't think so. It, it was kind of ridiculous how characters got from, one, p- from point A to point B in the movie. I actually, um, I I thought immediately when I saw the uh, the party scene when they they're they're like escaping from from their little bus prison, they're getting attacked by aliens. Most of them have never seen before. It's freaking chaos. It's insane. They see slaughter. Like I don't care if you're a soldier or what, but you see that kind of slaughter. Like the last thing you're gonna want to do is go sit around a pool and drink beers. <laughs> like, yeah. like like nothing is happening. Like yeah. it's all good. Well, um, I'm with you there. the The writing for the loonies was it was pretty funny. Uh, again, Shane Black has a knack for that kind of stuff. But yeah, listening to Olivia Munn's character try to describe what's happening with the uh, with the predator. I mean, she's supposed to be a science teacher, biologist, and the descriptions that she made about the predator just didn't really make sense at all. Yeah. At all. She was like a female Mark Wahlberg. We will fail to acknowledge that there are forces at work beyond our understanding. To be a good scientist, you must have a respectful awe for the laws of nature. Jake? <laughs> oh, <laughs> you know? Like. Well, she was missing the glasses, too, so I guess. Dude, I, I, I was confused about her character the entire movie. Like, is she ex-military? Because she picks up guns. She knows how to use them. She's yeah. definitely got the posturing, right? Um what is the deal with her and and why are they going to call her in like she's on there she's in the rolodex for oh if we ever find aliens get this chick involved because she's like our go-to gal but if she finds something out and and you leave and don't take her with you shoot her in the head what there, there was so many holes in that whole scenario like yeah so wait the alien the the predator uh all their technology is connected they don't have passwords so like if, if I have somebody else, another predator <laughs> shit, I can just like look through your predator shit or I can turn <laughs> off your pre- like the guy is chasing you. He's the be- he's the, the freaking he's your enemy. But the whole time I had the ability to control his ship with my little fucking remote control. <laughs> like, right. What the hell is going <laughs> on, dude? Like, <laughs> she goes from being a biologist to all of a sudden halfway through the movie jumping on top of moving vans That's and handling machine guns like she forgot well she forgot who she was in the movie the character what was her character though well, i don't know point. because they like, never really explained a military bra- background for her right they never really did that well, she, so. she didn't have one like she just did wrote a paper or something was that it she wrote a paper and well, yeah it, like, when it, she, she was in elementary school yeah, she wrote hey. a paper to the president saying oh, well. uh, if you ever get aliens right so kids <laughs> If you want to study aliens <laughs> when you get older. I used to write to NASA when I was a kid, and they sent me robot specs. So <laughs> write to NASA, and you might get to meet a predator someday. But then they're going to shoot you in the head. So Well, be careful, because some predators you don't want to meet. That brought up a good point. Don't want to meet a predator. All right, so they have a predator, right? He's alive. Cool. All right. They, that predator did the one thing I've always wanted to see since I've seen predator the first time in the 80s. He bit someone with those fangs. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> dude. And then they expounded on it cool. with some head uh, action. Yeah. Bit the dude's head off, man. Like, uh, I, I appreciated that thoroughly. Yeah. Uh, their ships, though, their technology, again, is, is, is suspect. All right? So, like, 
The government has his tech for all this time. They don't figure out how to use it. The guy blows his own head off with it because he, he's an idiot, but yet he's running the show. And then, again, all I got to do is launch this this primitive-ass combustion weapon at this super advanced spaceship, and it's going down. Like, the Predator ships are made of tinfoil. Like they, they, you, can, you can bounce bullets off their skin, right. but their tech is shit. Right. Sometimes. Well, well they're, they're not very smart. That's why they need to eat the autistic kids. <laughs> <laughs> now, like what I kept thinking this, that whole thing bothered me so much. Like what's the next predator movie going to be like a rain man predator? Just kind of like, <laughs> you know, like water burn baby, you know, F-A-R-T. you know, that kid, uh, nobody gave a shit about this kid. Yeah. I don't think there was a scene in the whole movie where you see the mom and the kid in the same room together. No. Like this kid is is uh, he's in element, elementary school, he has Aspergers, right? So they have him trick or treating by himself. Dude, he just left the house and at nighttime, the mom never interacts with him. He he hangs out in the basement like all day long. He has no friends. The only interactions he has with other kids his it's age the are the bullies. bullies. Yeah, yeah. There, there was a lot of setup in that that like fell uh, way flat. Like the whole chess piece thing. I thought that was going somewhere. I thought the kids were going to come back in and he had put them all in the right place. Well, I think it was right. to highlight his brilliance. You know, so sort of like uh, that idiot savant. Uh, you know, like genius mentality that that you saw in Rain Man. Yeah, well, I but got it felt. That. Oh, it felt ahead. like I'm sorry. It felt like an easy way out, though. Yeah. Like it, they set up the scene so that the bullies, um, you know, bother him. But to just put the pieces, the the, the chess pieces together, like it just, uh, it didn't feel feel right because they yeah. didn't explain it like exactly. they, he put the stuff on the board but they never told you that he put them in the right places well like, i don't know i kind of inferred that right I, 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 that's how that's how brilliant he is that he remembered everybody's right. moves i well, understood it that like he put me, them i'm sorry go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, it looked like to me that he just put the damn the damn things back <laughs> on the board yeah. it could have been anywhere like but the little music <laughs> the cool little music told you <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I understood that he put the pieces back in in, yeah. in the same place where they were supposed no, to go. You. But at the same time, it's, uh, one of the things that really bothered me about the kid being in the story is that, first of all, he's a kid. So yeah. here's the thing. I never felt like he was in any sort of danger at all. Like the predator is no. not going to kill him. So for him to be a central figure, a central character, uh, I never really felt like there was any danger for him. Um so I couldn't really care about him at all. Uh, you know, I didn't really, really care me. about any characters except for Thomas Jane and uh, what's it, Keenan Mike, Keenan Michael, K? Keegan Michael K, Keegan. Michael. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. I cared about those two guys, uh, and the dude that was like religious more than than the actual <laughs> the main characters. They were more fun. Yeah, like they had a good dynamic. I liked the way that they played off the each other. Yeah. Their chemistry was good. Um, I enjoyed like their entire story arc. The whole um, ending that they had with each other was was epic. Dude's got his intestines. Spoilers. On his yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. Well, again, if you haven't seen it in the title or in the description or when I said it earlier, <laughs> then dude, I got nothing for you, man. Um, a lot yeah. of people die here. Yeah, a lot. lots of people. Uh, in the beginning, uh, I immediately had the same thing I talked about when we talked about the trailer. Um. If they kept this shit in space, as soon as it opened, it was like this awesome, epic, like space battle. I was and, like ripping holes in, in the fabric of space time. I'm like, dude, just stay with the predators. Don't go to Earth. Yeah. Like, please don't go to Earth. I want to see this shit. You know, they played around with how they can. The predators can understand English. They can speak to the audience. And now they gave us a character that can be a little human predator so he can put his little suit on. He can ju- and uh, and obviously there's a faction now that are human friendly. So hook up with those guys, go into space and raid the main predator planet. Let's see that shit. Like, I'm done. I'm done with the woods. I'm done with like tin foiled spaceships. You know what gave me like super a, a very cringy moment for me was the trope of where they're running away from the from a monster and they run into the school. I feel like that's in every freaking yes, horror movie. It is. Where they <laughs> yeah. like. The only time I ever liked it is probably in Stranger Things. Like they actually like, you know, cool. they, they did something cool with it. Yeah. Um, but for the most part, God, I'm tired <laughs> of people running into a freaking school. Yeah. 
Just stay away from the school. Stay away from the school. Stay away from the school mm-hmm. and alien space dogs if shot in the head become your best friend. Apparently. Alien space dogs are hard to kill apparently. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they were predator. Well, they, like, <laughs> yeah. they were and I, I liked how the one dude mentions like the dreadlocks. He's like, well, <laughs> can you explain like why do the dogs have dreadlocks? <laughs> he called them, he said Whoopi Goldberg. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Whoopi Goldberg. Well, what exactly did the dogs do? I mean, they had a scene where they came attacking the uh, group in the field, but they were killed pretty quick. Uh, they never killed anybody that I can remember. No. So they were kind of underutilized. They yeah. were trackers, and that, that was pointless because without the dogs, he found those guys in literally less than 30 seconds. Yeah. Like, literally less than 30. He gave them seven minutes. <laughs> <laughs> what, what, one of the little things that, that kind of bothered me a lot was um, when uh, the main character finds the, the helmet and um, the arm thing, the he runs into this little Mexican cantina. <laughs> <laughs> and, he, and he tells this guy at gunpoint, mail this shit over to this place, right? So then the guy, very scared, you know, takes the money, goes to mail it. But when the kid opens it, like the helmet is like very nicely bubble wrapped. It's like, <laughs> he, 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 like he just like it has all this like stuffing on it. You know, it's like he just got it back from Amazon. So like exactly. who, who did that? <laughs> Amazon. Yeah. I don't know. What's Amazon in Spanish? Just Amazon. 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 <laughs> Is it really? Yeah, Amazon. Yeah. No shit. Yeah. All yeah. right. Yeah. Throughout the movie, I had a really hard time. Uh, just a lot of the scenes felt like they were poorly lit, and all the quick cuts kind of kill the action scenes for me. Did you guys feel the same way? I like the goriness of it. That's one yes. thing that I liked. I love seeing. There was this one shot where they kind of just fo- focus on intestines hanging for yes. like what's, what feels like at least 20 seconds. Yeah. Yes. And uh, there was this really great scene where Predator just, I think you see it in the trailer. He's like fucking just jabs the shit out of somebody that was freaking awesome so there was a lot of brutality i I think the movie should have had like a lot more of that so yeah these movies have never really been action driven but um they're they're i guess the first one is kind of more of a the first part was more of a horror movie i guess thriller it's It's not even a horror horror movie yeah it's like a suspense thriller yeah come on in all painless is waiting And this one really wasn't much of anything, right? It was just kind this of like one a, a didn't jumbled know mess. What it wanted to be. Yeah, I think it knew. I think everybody knows what. Like I said, everybody wants the predator to go off world, you know. And I think that they, that maybe they set it up that way. They didn't do a very good job, no. but he definitely did a good job setting up the characters. And I'm going to give him kudos for that because I enjoyed the banter and the and like I said, the the group actions. Um, they had pretty good chemistry. Yeah, and the new Predator was cool. I mean, it was all CG, whatever. But but it, you, you, it was it was really hard to to see what it was actually doing. It was killing somebody, but the cuts were so quick that you kind of missed uh, the good stuff. A lot of the good stuff, the gore, the stuff that I really like. Anyways, the intestine thing was cool, though. Yeah, mm-hmm. it was like, cool. I, I was like, dude, please fall out. Is it gonna fall out? <laughs> I was like, just yeah. Wondering, like, is is it? The colon gonna come out now. Like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Fall out. There's the quote of the day. <laughs> the, uh, I think at the end, the nice juxtaposition of, um, you know, the the main predator race is trying to go like bio, and the the enemy's attack against bio is tech. So that was pretty cool. So you know, maybe that's yeah. why they wanted it so bad because the bio thing kind of sucks. And the tech is way cooler. Right. And something else I noticed that in the first movie, um, in the first Predator, all the soldiers, they're like very cocky. All, they're like super cocky soldiers. And then throughout everything that that's happening, some of them develop like PTSD. Sure. And start talking to themselves. In this movie, the soldiers begin with PTSD, right. and they be, they become more badass as right. the movie progresses. They so. remember. Yeah. Right? They get used to their situation again yeah so i thought, I thought first that was they don't want to deal with a predator because they're all inside of the house <laughs> they don't want to leave that was awesome i yeah. i appreciate exactly that, that yeah. whole speech thing uh it was good writing there too like, yeah uh your speech didn't inspire me you know <laughs> but he called me a pussy <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> i appreciate that all right uh What's your final thought? My final thought is uh, I, I'm going to stop rating movies based on numbers because I think it becomes kind of too arbitrary. And I don't really think it means anything for anybody if I give something a three or a four. I'm with you. So I'm going to go with like, should you watch it or should you not watch it? Oh, cool. All right. And honestly, if you're a fan of The Predator, um, 
I would watch it because there's some fun moments in the movie and uh, there's some really gory uh, action sequences. So for those reasons alone, I would I would watch it. Um, but I think it's going to disappoint most fans and most moviegoers. I would recommend you watch this movie. Um, it was, you know, this is supposed to be a first part of a trilogy, apparently. And I think Shane Black, ha- Shane Black has uh, a lot of work to do. But if you're a fan of The Predator, you get the kills. You get the gore. Uh, not much in the story, but the characters are likable. So I would recommend that I give it about a two and a half out of five. All right. Well, I thought it was fun, but I definitely wouldn't pay money to see it. It's a it's a Netflix it's a Netflix night. <laughs> um, it has potential if they go off world. Um, I don't know. I mean, I, I enjoyed the throwbacks to the original too because they actually did mention the second one they said uh, what happened in the jungle in 87 and they talked about 97 right yeah in the so city. I, I appreciate that they they didn't forget about old danny <laughs> yeah and uh, they even had some clips of that stuff but i didn't appreciate the cheesy uh jokes so uh for that reason i would give it a low score but i'm with you i don't want to give scores anymore so yeah my my review would be to to definitely check it out because it it's still a Predator movie. When that Predator music starts, you still get pumped. I don't care if even if it is a shitty movie, uh, but watch it at home where you can take a <laughs> piss and pause it if you need to. <laughs> You'll and, feel better. Well, do you pause it first and then piss? <laughs> or you can just go, you know, like while the kid is is putting the chess pieces. <laughs> yeah, it's a good time board, to be right at the beginning of the like movie. Five minutes. <laughs> yeah. And we didn't talk about Jake Busey. I mean, come on. If you're going to watch the movie, watch it for him at least. <laughs> yeah. Man, I was nice was seeing Jake Busey. Yeah, it was awesome seeing Jake. Yeah. Like his... He's supposed to be the son of uh, Keys in Predator 2. Oh, okay. Yeah. No way. Yeah. All right. Fun facts, guys. Fun yeah. facts. The more you know. All right, guys. That's going to wrap it up for our review of The Predator. Uh, Shane Black, though, veteran direct- directing. He co-wrote the first one, so it's cool to see him come back to his, his own franchise, basically. Yeah. He had the worst jokes also, though, in the first one. So. Yeah, so some bad jokes in this yeah, one, too. Yeah, <laughs> pussy and stuff. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> it was bad. Um, all right, guys, so you know the drill. If you are new to this show, head on over to our channel. Check out our old episodes because there's a lot of them now. This is 15 and 16. 15, almost legal. Yeah. Holy crap. <laughs> now we just need subscribers. So why don't you subscribe below and then ring that bell? I'm not sure. I think it actually activates when you subscribe. But if it doesn't, make sure you hit that bell so you get notified when we put up 17 and 18. Uh oh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Peace. <clears throat> <clears throat> <laughs> that was a good one. I think you redlined. I think you redlined on that one. <laughs> and I looked away. You know when you do the uh, company logo? That should be the sound bite right there. <laughs> like the Joe Rogan experience. <laughs> What's up, drunk bitches? <laughs> Hello.